Comedy Kingdom. Comedy Kingdom. At this time, we're going to take up the subject of moods. We're going to attack the problem from three angles. First, what are moods? Second, why are moods? And third, who cares? <laughs> now, here in the laboratory, we have two nice young moods, which we're going to analyze. Um, the first one I caught myself. I caught it when it was very young and innocent. It was a wistful mood, and it looked up at me with its big brown eyes as if to say, fully. But then, of course, it was that kind of a mood. The second one was caught by four other people. It really didn't need so many because it was a very slow, lazy, easygoing sort of a mood. But I'll let them tell you about it. After all, it's their mood. Here they are, eeny, meeny, miny, and mo, and their mood is... Old rocking chair got me Came by my side Oh, fetch me some gin, son Oh, I tan your hide can't get from this cabin Oh, no, well Just sitting here grabbing At the flies round this old rocking chair My dear old Aunt Harriet Way up in heaven she be Won't you send me down, sweet chariot for the end of the trouble I see, I see Old rocking chair got me Judgment day is here And I'm chained to my old rocking chair Fellas, I've got a swell idea. What's that, boy? Let Pappy sing along. Yeah, oh, well, boys, I'm getting old, you know. My singing's not the best. But I'll sing the good old southern way if you fit in with the rest. Now, how about sure. that? Old rocking chair's got me. Well. I got my cane came by my side. Oh, come on, fetch me some of that there gin you got over there, son. We got no gin around this cabin. Gonna get to switch and start to spank it. Oh, can't get from this cabin, boys. Come on, Pappy, play some football. Let's get going. Go somewhere. Oh, I just want to sit me around the hill grabbing. There's some of these old flies around this here old rocking chair. Now you know my dear old head heavy. Way up 
sweet heaven she be. Won't you see me dance, sweet chariot? For the end of the trouble I see, I see. Oh, that music is sure mighty, mighty pretty, boys. Oh, that southern drawl sure is fine. Now, how about that, son? No, no, Pappy, it's much too slow. Let's give it that modern ride. Yeah. Old Rocker got me. Judgment Day is here, and I'm changing to my old rocking chair. Speaking of rocking chairs reminds us of home, and home reminds us of the couple who live next door to the royal palace of the comedy kingdom. You remember them, Joe and Edna? Let's sneak over there right now and see what kind of a mood they're in. Oh, look, they're in their charming little dinette just finishing a meal. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, what a meal, what a meal. I feel like a million dollars. <laughs> Why, Joe, oh, boy. I've never seen you in such a jovial mood. What have uh, you got in Your you? dinner, honey, your dinner. <laughs> now bring on the dessert. I'm ready for anything. Well, here it is, darling. Uh, right there. That, huh? Oh, dessert. You don't mind my asking, what is it? Why, it's a little pie I created just for you. Created? You don't mean cremated, do you? <laughs> Joe. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Didn't mean it. Seriously, Edna, don't you uh, cook a lot more for dinner than we actually use? Why, of course, silly. Well, why? Well, if I didn't, how could I economize by making leftover dishes? I see. Well, I try to economize. You do, huh? Why, yes. Just last week on my 40th birthday party, I only had 25 candles on the cake. Oh, I see, yes. You economize all right. Your idea of economy is running a trailer camp for all your relatives. <laughs> Joe, that reminds me. Now what? Mother's coming for a visit. What? Oh, now my day is spoiled. That old cat coming here. Joe, how can you call my mother an old cat? I take it back. She's not so old. Yes, no. Uh. <laughs> Why, even in her letter, she said the prospect of paying us a visit just made her feel like a three-year-old. Horse or egg? Joe! <laughs> now listen to me, Edna. I've stood for a lot from your relatives. I've stood for that playboy brother of yours in this house for three years. Playboy? Yeah. Why, Joe, only last night, Eddie came home... Stone cold sober. Mm, yeah, what is he trying to do? Scare us? <laughs> Those cousins of your mother's, they came for a weekend and they've been here for two years. Well, there's one thing about Cousin Jasper. He's yeah. cheerful. He never borrows trouble. No, not as long as he can borrow anything else. Every nickel I lend him goes into a marble machine. Why, Joe, Cousin Jasper doesn't gamble much. Just once he bought a ticket and a raffle for his wife. Oh, so that's how he got her, huh? <laughs> I'll have you know, Joe Fisher, my ancestors came over in the Mayflower. They were lucky. Lucky? Yeah, the immigration laws are stricter now. That's the limit. That's the limit. I've stood all I can. Now I'm going to speak my mind. Ah, peace and quiet at last. <laughs> but anything you say goes, dear. That's better. In one ear and out the other. Sometimes I just like to know why you ever fell in love with me. Oh, so you've begun to wonder, too, huh? <laughs> when I met you, I was a struggling young girl, after all. Yeah, after all you could get. I'll have you know before I accepted you, I said no to dozens of men. What were they selling? <laughs> I just wonder what would happen if you and I ever agreed on anything. I'd be wrong. <laughs> oh, Joe, why do we have to act like this? All the years we've been together, don't they mean it? <laughs> just think, getting married and our first little home and our garden and the children and the depression. Why, Joe, you're actually smiling. Joe, does that smile mean you want to make up? No, I'm just resting my face. <laughs> Another expert on the subject of moods is Court Troubadour Harris. He probably knows more different moods than anybody in the entire kingdom. In fact, he knows so many that he's seriously thinking about starting a moodist camp. <laughs> there, see? I told you, he's got a mood now. Sometimes I find I'm in a gay mood I want to play mood, I want to dance Tonight I find I'm in a blue mood And I love you mood I want romance Never dare to have your arms around me not that I considered it a sin But tonight I want your arms around me It's the mood that I'm in Can it be the music that they're playing Or the magic of the violin That intrigues my heart into obeying It's the mood that I'm in Maybe it's the cocktail that I'm sipping 
That helps to put me in this frame of mind Maybe it's because of you I'm slipping Tonight I'm so romantically inclined So speak to me of love with words so tender Let the rhapsody of life begin I could give my heart in sweet surrender It's the mood that I mean. Some time ago, I appointed two of my mood inspectors to find out all they could about the care, feeding, and infant training of young moods. They are here now with their report, but don't blame me if it isn't accurate. Null and void. Well, 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 well. <laughs> well, Mr. Boyd, hello. My, but you seem in a jolly mood today. A jolly mood? Oh, I should say I am. Yeah. When the mood is slowly Just a minute. Just, just, just a minute, Mr. Boyd. Our contract doesn't call for your singing, you know. Oh, I know, but those old songs just seem to haunt me. No wonder the way you've been murdering them. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Boyd, I understand that lately you have been in the writing mood. Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Null. I must admit, I have been flourishing the quill. Oh, that's fine, have you? You sold anything? Yes, my watch and overcoat. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Boyd, I don't like to appear astronomical, but whatever became of your brother Quincy? Oh, haven't you heard? Quincy has been touring Europe. Oh, my, how interesting. Yes, his wife got a card from him in Italy just the other day. He said he was visiting Florence and having a swell time. Oh, what did his wife say to that? She wrote back and said, hop to it, kid. I'm having a swell time here with George. Oh, <laughs> I see. Yes. I suppose he visited the Dardanelles. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. In fact, he had dinner with him. Oh, did Quincy visit Venice on his tour? Did he visit Venice? Oh, Mr. No, Quincy was nearly drowned in Venice. <laughs> nearly drowned in Venice? Well, how did that happen? He got intoxicated, you know, spit. Yes. And tried to lay down in the gutter. Oh. <laughs> say, speaking of touring, have, uh, have you... You've got a trailer for your car? Oh, yes, the man from the finance company. Oh. <laughs> you know, Mr. Boyd, I feel the mood of drama overtaking me. Very well, then. On with the show! Curtin! <whistles> works tree, works tree, all about the bird. Here, Sonny, give me one of your papers. Oh, please, kind sir. My beautiful sister is dying of starvation. I beg of you. Please buy the rest of my paper. No, but I'll take your beautiful sister out to dinner. <laughs> Curtin! <laughs> Ah, those parts just simply take everything right out of me. I say, Mr. Boyd, do you think our fans would like one of our plays laid in the great Northwest? Oh, by all means. And the further north we lay it, the better. (laughs) And in conclusion, let me remind the ladies that the thin girl goes out with the Tom, Dick, and Harrys, but the fat girl stays home with the Willies. Oh, goodbye! (laughs) So long. I want one last word to which a woman, even a queen, is entitled. And here it is. Moods are a good deal like beds. They're easy to get into, but usually terribly hard to get out of. (laughs) 